over aggressive at time and times in my career. <laughs> One might characterize your performance this year as, as being truly intimidating. Does it bother you to, to be called an intimidator, to be nicknamed the intimidator? I don't, no, not really, but it, it's not a thing that I want to be called, or, or it's something that, you know, the fans, the press, the souvenir folks, all these folks have, have sort of labeled you. Uh, you know, you drive a black car and you're, you're aggressive and, you know, the, you know the, maybe some are intimidated, maybe some aren't. Uh, maybe we can out, outrun some of them with equipment, maybe I can outdrive some of them, maybe the engine outruns some of them. Anything you can have or do to, to be competitive more than the other guy and beat them is, is, a, is a part of your, your you know, your, your plan to beat them or your system to beat them. And if you can intimidate them and then they call you an intimidator, well... So be it. You're able to maneuver a race car, a 3,500-pound Chevrolet, into an opening that probably shouldn't be wide enough for a motorcycle. You not only maneuver it in there, you make it work. And there are your competitors who probably wouldn't even attempt it, much less be able to make it successful. How do you do that? You don't even think about it. I, you know, I make my move, and I'm going, and I, and I would do it. Uh, Bristol, Talladega, Darlington, wherever it may be. Uh, I made a pass on Kyle Petty in the 26 car at Bristol this year going down the front straightway and shot down sort of between them and down into turn one. And I didn't think nothing of it. I, everybody was talking about it after the race. Well, finally, I seen it on tape, me and Carl Cameron, it's pretty tight. <laughs> but I didn't think it was that tight, you know. But, it, you know, if I'd have been watching it on TV, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> there are moments this year where many people have gotten to see the human side of Dale Earnhardt. For example, Talladega after Rusty's flip, we saw a very emotional, oh, very I was pretty concerned there. visibly shaken Dale Earnhardt. Well, I was uh, involved in something there that was of my doing, and uh, uh, whether it was, it wasn't intentional, but it was, it was surely my fault, and surely I had control of my race car just like Rusty did. Even though Rusty was coming down and I was going, and and I when I you know connected with him, I I turned him and it turned him over and. And uh, I thought drastically, he injured him. I mean, I could just imagine the worst. And uh, I wanted to see him, and I wanted to know he was okay, you know, at, at least, you know, talking. And, uh, you know, we had lost uh, Neil for a couple of years in racing and, and uh, lost some, uh, you know, people uh, over the years but uh, uh, to accidents and didn't come back to racing. But, uh, you know, I wanted him to look at me and say, yeah, I'm okay, Dale. I'm all right, you know, and it, whether he's mad at me, whether he's trying to get out of the car and kill me or what, I wanted to see that he's okay. Uh, but uh, I was very concerned about that, and I felt very bad about that because it, it was involved, and it was, you know, mostly my fault. <laughs> you know, it was, I mean, I'm going to take the blame for that. And uh, I've learned and, and, and tried to mature with racing, and as, as a racer, tried to learn the whole way. And if I don't keep learning, if I stop and say, hey, I'm the best, uh, I think that'll probably be the end of the career right there. I think it'll, you know, stay there or go down the hill. 1993 has been a very traumatic year in, in all of sports, but in motorsports with the loss of two two very talented drivers. Tragic. Tragic loss of Alan Kowicki and Davey Allison. Has, have those tragedies off the racetrack made you sit back and sort of rethink your lifestyle a little bit? Well, not really uh, change or, or anything, but you do... Uh, you do uh, look around and, and try to not go so fast. And, you, know, you need to stop and say hi or say, you know, call your mom and tell you love, you love her before you leave town or when you get back in town. And I still don't do that enough. Uh, you know, be close with your wife and kids and stuff like that. Because you have, we are, I'm going to tell you, I'm a lucky person. I've got a great wife, got great family, got great kids. Fortunate to have a lot of things and to be able to enjoy a lot of things. Probably a lot of people don't have or will never have 
But uh, don't, it really doesn't matter what you have. As long as you've got happiness and family and, and uh, friends and church uh, and enjoy it and take advantage of that happiness. Don't let it slip away. Don't let it go by you. And then one day you're gone or somebody's gone that you love. I mean, it's like my dad. I wish I'd have told him I loved him, you know, the day I'd seen him the day before he died. I mean, I didn't. It was too late the next day.